وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحابه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين All praises due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day. I'd like to welcome you, dear viewers, to another in our series, In the Names of Allah. In this series, we're looking at names of Allah which have been revealed to us in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as these are the only reliable sources for names. The names of Allah are as He named Himself, not as we as human beings would choose or uh, create for Him, considering that He best knows Himself. So we have restricted this program to the names found in the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And in this segment, we're looking at two names. Two names which are of a common origin. One is Al-Khaliq and the other Al-Khalaq. These are names number 15 and number 16. The name Al-Khaliq is found 11 times in the Quran. Among them, from Surah Al-Hashr, Huwa Allahu Al-Khaliq Al-Bari Al-Musawwir. He is Allah, the Creator, the Originator, the Fashioner. And Al-Khalaq is mentioned only two times in the Quran. Among them, is that found in Surah Al-Hijr, verse 86, إِنَّ رَبَّكَ هُوَ الْخَلَّاقُ الْعَلِيمُ Indeed, your Lord is the all-knowing Creator. Now, if we look at the root of these two names, we'll see that the common uh, gerund or verbal noun that it comes from is khalq. And khalq means or has two basic meanings. One, the creation of something which is completely original without there existing something like it before, and its creation from nothing. And the other is an estimation and measurement. <clears throat> Relative to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the divine name al khaliq and its intensive form al khalaq refers to the original creation, making, and measurement of the universe and its contents. Allah is the creator of the universe and whatever it contains. Hal min khaliqin ghayrullah? As Allah asks in Surah Fatir, verse 3, Is there any creator besides Allah? No, he is the one and only creator. Everything besides him is creation and everything which we consider to be created is in fact manipulated by human beings or by the creatures in this world human beings are not able to create from nothing whatever we create is 
a manipulation of whatever already existed. So, although we refer to creation in, in the human sense, it is really used in a metaphorical sense. It's not true and real creation. It is a manipulation of what already exists. So, for example, the chair that I'm sitting on. Uh, it has metal, it has wood, it has cloth. Now, each and every one of these units were from something else. The cloth came from cotton, for example, which is from plants. And the wood came from a tree. And the metal came from rocks. So these things were manipulated and reorganized or reassembled to produce this chair. You know, maybe the first chair made in this particular design. So it has that element of originality to it. But still, it is not from nothing. It is from something which already exists. Only a law creates absolutely from nothing. And the term, the fact that the term creator is used for other uh, elements in the creation can be found in Surah Al-Mu'minun, verse 14, تَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنُ الْخَالِقِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْخَالِقِينَ meaning, blessed is Allah, the best of creators. So in that verse, Allah is identifying other creators. <coughs> but as I said, this is just from a metaphorical perspective. Those other creators are not true creators in the full sense. So, this uh, characteristic of being the creator is a unique characteristic, that he, and he alone is the creator from nothing. Everything else besides Allah is creation. So, when we think of the basic principle of Tawheed, of the unity of Allah, it has a dualistic element to it, in that the unity of Allah is distinct from the unity of His creation. We have two unities here. The unity of Allah and the unity of His creation. They are different and distinct. They are not mixed in any way. You know, the creation is a product of Allah's creative activity. Now, some people who had difficulty grasping how can something be created from nothing, their understanding, and this we find in Hinduism, for example, is that when God created, since it was just Him and there was nothing else, He took from His head and He created some human beings. From His arms and He created another set of human beings. From His legs, another set. And from His feet, another set. So you have four basic castes or uh, social levels in Hinduist, Hindu uh, philosophy or Hindu, the Hindu faith. And they arrived at that because they couldn't understand the idea of creating from nothing. Because they, in looking at themselves, looking as human beings, everything we do is creation from something. So they have taken this, in their inability to conceive of a creation from absolute nothing, they have then taken the practice of human beings and given that to God. So they've made him, in fact, like his creatures. Now if we go on to the effect of belief in these divine names, Al-Khaliq and Al-Khalaq, what they affirm for us, first and foremost, as believers, is the logic of belief in God. Allah said in Surah At-Tur, أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ أَمْ خَلَقُوا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بَلْ لَا يُوقِنُونَ Were they created from nothing, or did they create themselves? Or did they create the heavens and earth? Indeed, 
they are uncertain. In this, these verses, 35 and 36, from Surah Tur, which is the 52nd chapter of the Quran, Allah addresses those people who claim later. Most of the verses of the Quran don't come from this point. Most of the verses of the Quran come from the point that people believe in God. But they have become negligent. They are not uh, reflecting on his bounties, his mercies, his blessings in their lives. They're not reflecting on this. So Allah reminds them. Have you seen how Allah spread out the earth? How he created the camel and so on, so on, so forth. You know, he gives this as a reminder to them of their uh, need to accept uh, Allah as the creator and give the praise and thanks, gratitude which is due to him through worship. But in this verse and a few others like it in the Quran, Allah actually tackles that small minority, few people in this world who actually believe there is no God. So he gives them a logical scenario to reflect on. Were they created from nothing? Were they created from nothing? Or by nothing? This is the first question. Now, common sense says that nothing cannot produce something. Nothing cannot produce something. So, that's cancelled. They could not have been produced by nothing. Spontaneously coming into existence from nothing. That goes against all reason. So that's the first option that Allah gives them. Is that what you claim? Or the second one, or did you create yourselves? Amhumul Khaliqun. Did you create yourself? This is another possibility, which again is illogical. Could we have created ourselves? To create oneself one first had to not exist. And if you didn't exist, how can you create yourself? Because for you to do creating, you must exist. So therefore, it's not possible that you created yourselves. This is the beginning of a logical argument which Allah is giving to those who deny that there is a creator. We'll Continue that after the break. Inshallah, we're going to take a short break here and we hope to see you after this break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. My name is Shrifa Tuni and this is brought to you from Huda TV. Um, in today's edition, we'll be discussing about uh, the day and night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equated the samawat with darkness, the firmament with darkness, and equated the earth with light. Why? Are there really pillars that cannot be seen? Or is it an unseen or, uh, pillar? Everything is running, but the relationships are fixed. Yes. So that it would appear to people as if nothing is running, you see. We are destroying the, our environment with our own hands. And that's why the Quran says, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون The road seems long Remember, just remember Seek strength from the strong Alhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalamu rasulillah All praise due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. Welcome back dear viewers to our program In the Names of Allah. And we're continuing to look at two names, name number 15 and number 16, the list that we are following, Al-Khaliq and Al-Khalaq. And I will just remind you, as I said, in the list we're following, because this is not to say that these are names number 15 and 16. It depends which order you want to put them in, 
uh, what list you want to make. We are not uh, insisting that this is, these are the actual numbers. We are only, for our purposes, in listing and working our way through 99 of Allah's names, this in our list is 15 and 16. So, we began to look at an argument which Allah presents. We said, knowing Allah is the creator, al-khalaq, it should give us a sense of empowerment to accept or to know that the belief in a creator is a logical and reasonable belief. Because those who deny God's creation, that God's existence, and that the creation is from God, say it's just an accident, they basically argue that belief in God is irrational. It is something illogical. Uh, people just, it's blind faith, as they call it. Whereas their belief is that what they believe is logical, that this is all a big accident, and that's why we're here. However, Allah presents a logical argument for them. In Surah at tur verses 35 and 36, He asked them, Am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in? Were they created from nothing or by nothing? They have to say no. If nothing was there, how could we come into existence? The other option, Am humul khaliqun? Or did they create themselves? Again, we said, that's not logical. That's not logical. Because they would have to have not existed to then create themselves. And Allah goes on to say, Am khalaqu samawati wal ard? You know, not only did they create themselves, but they also created the heavens and the earth. Bal la Indeed, they are uncertain. Even if they wanted to make a claim for themselves, yeah, we created ourselves, but the heavens and the earth, problematic. It's too much. But even to say that we created ourselves is nonsense. It's illogical. Because, as I said, you have to have not existed so that you could create yourself to come into existence. And if you are not existing, you can't do any creating. So, those two options are finished. Allah, in this verse, does not mention the third option. That is, somebody created you. Somebody had to create you. He just leaves it there for the person with a mind to think, to grasp it. He only gives the two options which could not be what else is left, but that somebody created you. That's the logic for the belief in God. There has to be a creator. So this is the argument presented by the Quran, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. There are some people who say, well, okay, yeah, uh, there was a creator and he created me, but he was created by somebody else. And that somebody else was created by somebody else and so on and fo so forth, and so on and so forth. Going back, reality is that if you're going to go back infinitely, because that's what you're saying now, each creator had a creator, then that is like saying there was no creation. The very fact that we exist is proof that there had to be one creator. Because if each creator had a creator, you're going back infinitely, you're going back to infinity, means that it would take an infinite amount of time to get to where we are now. means it would not get here. The very fact that we exist here right now is proof that there was one creator. Actually, this is the argument used by Aristotle. Aristotle and Plato, they logically proved the existence of God. And according to Western thought, 
the originators of logic, the people who laid down the rules for logic, were the ancient Greeks. And here we have the logicians themselves using their minds, their brains, their reason to come to the conclusion that there must be a God. So that in itself is something worth thinking for those people who like to claim that those who believe in God are doing it out of emotion, out of blind faith. No. It is quite reasonable and logical to believe in God. The second uh, point, which should be considered from the name Al-Khaliq and Al-Khalaq, is that whatever exists in creation is by the will and the wish of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he said in Surah Al-Qasas, verse 68, وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ Your Lord creates whatever He wishes and chooses. Whatever is considered to be creation, whatever exists, is by His wish and His choice. So it means then that everything which exists is by the choice and the will and the wish of Allah. Now, that is a basic part of belief in God. There are those who say, well, if your God is all-powerful, He is Al-Aziz, we believe that. And you believe Him to be good, right? Yes, we believe God to be good. Well, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is tayyib, He's good. And He loves, وَيُحِبُّ الطَّيِّبَةِ And he loves, he loves good. So Allah is good. We don't, Allah is not an evil God. He's a good God. That's our belief. So they said, okay, if he's all powerful and he's good, where did the evil come from? For them, as they argue, the very existence of evil is proof that there is no God. There couldn't be a God if he's good, unless you have an evil God. And for some people who are stuck with this idea, you have the people like the Zoroastrians of Persia. Their solution to this problem was to have a god of good, Ahura Mazda, and a god of evil, Angra Manu. So that way it was solved. God is good. Whatever comes from him is good. And there's this other god, who is like really Satan elevated to the status of being able to create like God. That's what they've done. And the evil comes from this individual. So that way evil is not attributed to God. But... From the Muslim perspective, that's not the case. Our belief is that God created everything. Whether, whether, whether it is good, or whether it is what we perceive to be evil. Because there are many things which are good, which under certain other circumstances can become evil. Rain, for example. Rain is a good thing. It causes the crops to grow and... Everything, but sometimes rain comes and it floods and people die. So it depends on the perspective one is looking at it from. It may be a good thing or it may be an evil thing. Reality is that Allah created nothing which was 100% evil. This is a point I made on an earlier program. Allah created nothing which is 100% evil. Because if that were the case, then you're talking about an evil God. He created something evil with an evil intent. That's an evil God. We do things like that. We have evil intents and we try to implement those evil intents as evil acts. That is, that in that small uh, parameter is pure evil. Relative to ourselves, that's pure evil. We thought evil and we did evil. But relative to Allah, even that evil which we thought and did, 
if we did it, it means he allowed us to do it, then there must be some good for which he permitted us to do this evil. Now, we don't, you know, justify our evil by saying, well, Allah made me, let me do the evil, so there must be some good, so that my evil is a good thing. No. Evil is evil still. Allah has prohibited this. And he has warned us of punishment for the evil. So it's not something that he's commanded. But he has permitted us to choose between good and evil. And if we weren't able to do evil, then the choice would be meaningless. So he permits us to choose it and to do it. Sometimes. If he sees in our doing it, a purely evil result, that there's no good that's going to come out of it, then he doesn't permit it. If there is some good along the line, some way, what we call the silver lining of the cloud, then he permits it. He allows it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever evil that exists in the world is by his permission and he is the one who takes out of what we may conceive to be evil, good. He is capable and able to do that. And that's why he would permit it. The last point that I would like to mention before we close is that the belief in Allah as the Creator also should offer us some sense of confidence in the fact that uh, Allah, whatever human beings do, they will not be able to achieve what Allah has done with regards to creation. You know, science is moving at a very fast pace now. The scientists are being promoted almost like gods in this world. They're able to do this, they're able to do that. seems like there's nothing they're not going to be able to do. But reflecting on this name of Allah brings us back down to earth to know that Allah is the only true creator in this world. With that, dear viewers, I'd like to thank you for being with us in this segment of the program. We hope to see you in our coming segments of In the Names of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you